Hey everyone and welcome back to another Fat for Weight Loss meal plan video. Today I'm showing you how to make a whole bunch of really fantastic ketogenic recipes with only three ingredients that you can make out of absolutely anything. I'm going to show you what it looks like on a plate and then I'm going to show you what it looks like cooked because what it looks like on a plate before it gets cooked is really important. It's great to have fancy recipes but sometimes you just need to take it back to basics. I probably eat this way about 80 to 90 percent of the time so I'm going to show you exactly how I do it and exactly how how you can make it work for you. So let's get started. Most people need macro calculators to figure out what a ketogenic meal looks like, but today I'm showing you a really simple ratio that you can use to make hitting your ketogenic macronutrients really easy. So you want 50% vegetables, green leafy or above the ground if possible, 25% protein which can come from fatty meat sources or nuts and seeds, and 25% healthy fats, things like butter, coconut oil, cheese or olives. Now I know what you're thinking, healthy food sounds really boring, right? But let's look at some ways you can spice these basic meals up just a little bit. If you want Mexican, you want to be trying lime and chili. If you want Indian, you want to be trying curry powder and garam masala. If you want something from the Middle East, you want to be trying lemon and parsley. If you want Greek, you want olive oil, lemon and oregano. If you want Italian, you want to be trying olive oil and basil. If you want French, you want to be trying wine, butter or cream. If you want Spanish, you want olive oil, garlic and almonds. If you want Hungarian, you want to be trying paprika and onion. If you want Nepalese, you want to be trying lime, ginger and chili. If you want to be trying Thai food, then try ginger, shallots and cilantro or coriander. If you want Vietnamese, try fish sauce and lemon. If you want Japanese, you want tamari sauce or coconut aminos and sake. If you want Korean, you want to be trying tamari, sesame and chili. And if you want Chinese, you want to be trying tamari and ginger. If you're from Australia, you can probably just put some Vegemite on it and call it a day from the land down under. If you're from Canada, you can probably put some cheese sauce on it and call it poutine. And if you're from America, well, I'm just going to leave that there. So again, these basic meals can be turned into some really easy culinary cuisines simply by getting creative with herbs, spices, and garnishes available to you. I'm going to show you some examples that might go together, but remember this is entirely up to you and what you've got available in your region. So this next meal is a really simple omelette made with butter and spinach, but watch as I put the raw ingredients on the plate. See how they approximately take up 50% vegetables, 25% protein, and 25% fat? This is the concept for all of the meals within this video. So we're going to heat up a frying pan and place the butter inside to melt so it mixes with the eggs. I've separately whisked the eggs with a fork and they are going to go into the pan. This will only take a minute or two to cook uh, and place the spinach in the pan as well to wilt down. Cover with any spice combination you like and you've got a really simple keto friendly meal. This next meal is a simple take on a broccoli and beef. So again, 50% vegetables, 25% protein, and 25% healthy fats. You're going to cook the mince first until it begins to turn a brownish color. And then you're going to put in the sliced broccoli and cook that for about five minutes or so until it's slightly crunchy still. Cover with the added butter and the spices of your choice. And you have another really simple, healthy, keto-friendly meal. Next up is a delicious garlic shrimp served with cauliflower rice. Again, 50% cauliflower, 25% protein, and 25% fat will always come out very close to a ketogenic macro ratio. The shrimp I use here is a pre-cooked version, so you can add the butter once they've thawed sufficiently, mix in some garlic with the butter, and using a food processor, slice the cauliflower down until it's about rice-sized pieces. You can also add store-bought cauliflower rice to this mix as well for an even simpler meal, but nevertheless, this is a winner in my books. If you think you might need more or less food than what's shown here, simply adjust the size of your plate and keep the same ratio in mind. Next up we have a bacon and avocado salad that is really basic, so make sure you add some herbs and spices to really keep this meal tasty. Most people here probably already know how to cook bacon, so we can just watch and drool, but you want to keep it fairly crispy. Also be sure to eat this meal fresh, as lettuce can be a fairly nasty food when it comes to salmonella poisoning. Don't store this in the fridge for too long. Slice up your avocado with a blunt knife, not like this hero here who thinks he'll never cut his hands cutting avocado, and enjoy topped with crispy bacon and even a drizzle of olive oil or a splash of lemon juice. This one's really tasty. 
This next recipe is a throwback to my days of eating tuna every day at work. Little did I know that mixing it with some homemade mayonnaise would make plain old tuna taste so much better. If you don't know how to make homemade mayonnaise, be sure to watch the video in the link below. I don't eat tuna every day these days because tuna can be a great source of heavy metal and not the good kind. Again, this meal is a combo of 50% spinach or whatever vegetables you like, 25% tuna and 25% mayonnaise. Add some curry powder to really give this meal some zest and mix it all together with the spinach. This meal could be great for work as you don't have to cook a single ingredient and it can be made using a single plate as shown. Again, here is some good old lettuce back for another round, but this time we're making a cheesy chicken salad. So 50% lettuce, 25% chicken thigh, and 25% cheese. Approximation is your friend with this ratio, so don't get too caught up in the details. I didn't place the chicken on the plate for a really important reason. You don't want to mix raw chicken with fresh lettuce like that. In fact, make sure you clean your chopping board well if alternating protein sources. My years of working in a butcher shop taught me that one. We're learning so much in this video. So many handy tips just thrown in casually. Be sure to share this video with your friends so we can all live in a happy, food poisoning free world. Anyway, slice the cooked chicken, or you could even just use rotisserie chicken, what we call barbecue chook here in Australia. Grate the cheese over whatever you like, but try and get it on the plate, and add the chicken, and you've got yourself a super easy, keto-friendly meal. Dress it up however you like, and enjoy your simple keto meal. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to get more information like this, head on over to fatforweightloss.com.au. There is a link in the description all about this post and I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do it. If you want more ingredients and more ideas like this, head on over to www.completeketodiet.com and enter your email for a free seven day trial and I will be sending you meal plans every single week so you never have to think about this sort of stuff again. So again, my name is Aaron. Thank you so much so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your time and I will see you in the next video.